Hello, I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist who's been doing psychopharmacology for over 30 years. And now I've added TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, to my armamentarium. And I wanted to say a few things about anxiety disorders. These are extraordinarily common, uh, with perhaps 5 or 10% of us having a relatively severe anxiety disorder now, and, uh, and the lifetime prevalence is probably uh, close to 25%. The main anxiety disorders are social phobia or social anxiety, and these are people who find it extraordinarily difficult to meet new people, uh, to, to do an interview, to be the center of attention. Uh, and this is rather debilitating as far as meeting people for as a potential spouse or even to get a good job. Uh, another disorder is panic disorder or panic attacks, and people get massive attack of anxiety where their heart pounds, they feel short of breath, they're shaking, they may feel hot and cold, and it's about the worst experience you can have and you feel like you're going to die. And if you're having a few of these per week, you begin to have a very difficult time leaving the house or leaving your apartment. And... Uh, so this can be pretty debilitating. Another anxiety disorder is just generalized anxiety. Somebody who worries all the time. Everything they do is, is uh, accompanied by worry. Remember, I had one fellow that worried all the time. He was in his 60s about the stock market. He just worried all day long about it. And he says, the funny thing is, I don't even own any stocks. <laughs> and uh, a uh, fourth... Uh, anxiety disorder is OCD, an obsessive compulsive disorder where somebody feels like they have to repeat something in their head, perhaps repeat a prayer over and over to avoid uh, bad things happening to them, or they have to touch something three times, or they have to count things and organize, and uh, various rituals usually to avoid something bad happening to them or to their family in the future. And a fifth anxiety disorder is post-traumatic stress disorder, which of course uh, is uh, caused by acute traumas or sometimes ongoing moderate traumas that have been going on for years. We'll, we'll post-traumatic stress disorder. And those people have a combination of anxiety symptoms and depression, and uh, basically you treat them with uh, the same things you treat anxiety and depression with. And uh, So what is the most common treatment? The most the common treatment is to start people out on an SSRI, a serotonin type medication, or a dual action one. Uh, like uh, Cymbalta, uh, Deloxetine, Effexor, which has been Lefaxine, or Pristique. Uh, and these uh, dual action ones are perhaps a little better because they may be a little more effective and more depression and, uh, and are less likely to poop out. Uh, one likes to use these serotonin medications so that one can use as little as possible of benzodiazepines. But frequently, the serotonin medicine is not going to completely solve the problem, and you end up adding a benzodiazepine, a Valium type medicine, Valiums, diazepam, Librium is chlordiazepoxide. Uh, clonopin, clonazepam, Ativans, lorazepam, Xanax is alprazolam. Uh, these medications are pure anti-anxiety agents and, uh, and they work uh, fairly well, but the problem is, uh, is they can make people a little sleepy and uh, you can't go around uh, functioning if you're cognitively impaired by a, a sedating medication. 
And then there's some risk of uh, getting dependent on these things, particularly uh, Xanax and Valium. Uh, the, uh, the risk is, in some people, abuse, especially people that have had a tendency to abuse recreational substances. They could get into trouble. Uh, another problem is just being physically dependent on them, especially short-acting ones like Xanax Alprazolam. Although it, in some people, seems to be the best possible thing to use for panic attacks, the fact that it binds tightly to the receptors and has a relatively short half-life means that if you go away for the weekend and you forget to take it with you, you'll turn around and drive back to get it. Where if you're on a, a much longer acting uh, medication like uh, clonopin, clonazepam, if you on a way on your way to go visit some friends for the afternoon, uh, you won't turn around and come back to get it. You'll say, "Well, I'll get really anxious by late this evening, but I'll be back by then anyway." Uh, now, these me these. Anxiety disorders can also be treated by uh, uh, um, the, tr the treatment with a serotonin medicine should kick in in the first week or two that you're seeing benefit. And it may take a few weeks to see maximum benefit. And by that time, you're probably adding it the benzodiazepine to uh, hurry things up. Now, it varies a lot about whether people need to stay on medication or not. Um, if, if somebody has social anxiety since they've been 12 years old and they're 28 and they've just had massive anxiety anytime they've had to get up and uh, speak in public in a classroom or, or interview for a job or meet a girl for a date, then they're probably going to have this chronically all their life. But in many of us, we have these things lasting for weeks or months under certain circumstances, and I think I've qualified for social anxiety disorder uh, a couple of times in my life that maybe for weeks or months I would have qualified for that. And so sometimes it, it's, it's a temporary thing and then the person will eventually be able to come off the medication and they'll do okay. Uh, I remember one of the first people with panic attacks I treated was a tennis teacher. And, uh, and he was having such massive panic attacks that I had to go out to Brooklyn to his apartment in order to evaluate him, to treat him. And um, it turns out that he was having these, you know, every year or six months, he would have panic attacks begin. And once they began, he would get so frightened he couldn't get on the subway, he couldn't even leave his apartment and his brother would have to bring him food. And then after some months of having the panic attacks, they would gradually go away. And then he would uh, go on the subway one stop and then turn around and come back. And he'd do that a few times. Then he'd go to two stops and then turn around and come back. And he'd gradually move out and get over his phobia. And then he'd do well for many months with no panic attacks, but then they uh, eventually would come back. Uh, I met an internist once I treated who was in his 80s, and when he was in his early 30s, he began to have panic attacks, so he had to hire a young man to drive him to the hospital. And then he had to have the young man go with him up the elevator to see the patients. His panic attacks got worse and worse, so that eventually he couldn't leave his townhouse. I don't know where he got the money to own a townhouse in New York, you can't do that now very easily. But uh, he, he got married, he had children, and he lived there for decades, but he never left. <laughs> he made his money by uh, writing some books, 
and uh, and if he tried to leave his townhouse, he'd start having such a severe panic attack he'd have to lean up against the building, and then he'd go back in. Now, this fellow had suffered with this for something like 40 years. So it can go on indefinitely. And uh, so and some people comes and goes, and some people it's, it's so steady. So no, no guarantee for... And there's no guarantee. So but, it, but you definitely should treat it because you can't just let somebody suffer. And you also have the possibility that if it's treated that you'll gradually get over your fears and you will be able to come off the medication. But it, it's uh, not so bad if you have to stay on medication. Uh, uh, you know, my wife was complaining to her internist, you know, now that her blood pressure is normal, does she still have to take this uh, blood pressure medication? And he says, well, you know, the blood pressure can kill you, but this pill won't kill you. And, uh, Sometimes uh, people have too much fear. There, there's a saying in Yiddish, Manhat mer moira van der krank vi van der medicina. People have more fear of the illness than they do of the medicine. And uh, we only live once, and there's no sense going through life suffering. You know, if you suffer and you don't take any medicine and you suffer with panic attacks and depression all your life, then, you know, when you get up to heaven, God's going to give you a medal and say, mm. I'm giving you a medal because you suffered for 75 years with torturous uh, anxiety and depression, but at least you didn't take any medicine. Uh, I don't think so. Um, but with TMS, uh it seems to have a very beneficial effect on anxiety. There's not a lot of research on it yet, but, but we've seen it many times that when we've, for one reason or another, just treated the right side with an inhibitory treatment, within days we've seen people's anxiety dissolve and get a lot better. And there is also uh, a specific ways of treating OCD with TMS. Uh, with the standard uh, figure eight machine, the people at Columbia, Montevani, and Listenby found a place, it's about here, it's called the pre-SMA, the pre-supplementary motor area, where they use an inhibitory treatment. And uh, they had a statistically significant benefit of treatment with OCD versus using a fake treatment. And then the Brainsway Company, which has a deep TMS, a helmet, and where the magnetic field goes in deeper, they found a different treatment, which is actually an excitatory treatment that mainly covers an, an area like this and goes in deeper. And that has statistically been shown to help out with OCD. And uh, it's also been used that particular helmet to treat post-traumatic stress disorder as well as OCD. Uh, there's a lot of uh, neurological disorders that have been uh, treated, uh, including helping people recover from strokes faster, helping people with movement disorders, helping migraines, and uh, and I've treated four people for Parkinson's disease and two of them were home runs that the, their Parkinsonian scale uh, went down over 50 percent and they stayed vastly improved for six months and then at that time they both came in and had some touch-up treatments uh, but that that was pretty dramatic Thank you very much, Doctor.